Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get started with Burp Suite. So Burp Suite is what's known as an interception proxy. It's a common piece of software used for web application security testing. So there's a number of other options that do similar things other than the Burp Suite. The, the biggest other competitor would be um, the OWASP Zap product. Uh, I've only ever really used Burp Suite, uh, honestly, because it works pretty well and it's so popular. Uh, OWASP Zap, though, um, it is also a nice alternative. It's pretty comparable to the free version of Burp Suite. Uh, and yes, there is a paid version. We'll be talking about some of the pros and cons. So first off, uh, the free version of Burp Suite. It works out like really, really well, and it's great for learning and testing purposes. So um, don't feel like you have to go out and buy the paid version right away. That being said, the paid version does have a lot of really nice features. Uh, some of the things the paid version has that the free version doesn't is you can work with project files. You can do uh, automated scans. There's no rate limiting with uh, doing different types of, you know, like password spraying attacks. There's, there's a lot of really great things you can do with the paid version, but it is roughly $450 per year. So it is not a cheap product, uh, but if you're going to be using Burp Suite to make money, as in you're doing this as like a professional or as a consultant, uh, then it would, it would definitely be worth uh, considering. But otherwise, again, for the for just learning purposes, the free community version is fine. If you want to tinker around with the professional version, they do offer a trial. Uh, I believe it's a 30-day trial. You just sign up on the Port Swigger website. So Burp Suite is pre-installed on Kali Linux. Uh, so it makes it really accessible and easy to use. I'm going to go ahead and launch it. And again, this is going to be the free community version. And it's under Web, web Application Analysis. And we'll launch Burp Suite. Uh, depending on what version of Kali you have, um, you may get like a Java error message. Uh, I'm, I'm not getting that message, but if you did, you would just click, you know, to proceed and you get to a window that looks like this. So if you have the, the paid version, you can, you can actually create different project files, uh, but that feature does not exist in the community version, which is why we're getting this error message right here. Um, or not really even an error message, just a warning saying, hey, if you want to be able to use these extra features, you should buy the paid version. So we can't because we don't have the paid version, so we're just going to do the temporary project. And we can also then uh, choose to load a configuration file or just use the default. And this might be ha helpful if uh, you use Burp Suite quite often, and maybe you use Burp Suite from a, a wide range of devices. You use it from a, a Kali Linux virtual machine, and then maybe you have it installed on your MacBook, and then maybe your desktop computer at home. If you have like a if you have a configuration file, you might have you know saved on like a you know OneDrive or Dropbox. You can actually use it to load uh, various predefined configurations that you might have your preferences and those types of things. Uh, I don't have that configured, so I'm going to just use the the defaults for now. And it's going to launch and load the dashboard. Uh, Burp Suite by itself does not require a ton of resources. It's kind of like a, a mid white mid weight application. Uh, again, I'm just running it inside of a Kali VM. I don't have a ton of resources allocated to this. I think it's pretty pretty lean, and I don't have any performance issues. So on the dashboard here, first off, we have tasks. Uh, you'll see this being populated with various things that we're running um, within Burp uh, issues. So if Burp detects any uh, issues with the web application, they'll show up over here. Uh, the paid version has a lot more automated testing. This is going to just kind of catch the, the most critical things, event log, um, and then advisors. You'll see this also populate with some useful information as we start going through and using it. The real important part of Burp Suite is going to be um, these tabs at the top. These are going to be kind of the key functions that Burp Suite provides. And at least in my class, we're going to be going through a lot of these throughout the semester. Target is going to be the first tab that we're going to visit. This is where you essentially can start doing your work. And there's two ways you can use Burp Suite as a proxy. Number one, you could use the built-in browser, uh, which is built into new versions of Burp Suite. This is a relatively newer feature, and if you've been using Burp uh, for a while, you probably know that Burp didn't always have this built-in browser just right here that you could launch. Uh, traditionally, you would have to do something uh, with another browser, and this is what I'm also going to show you how to do. You have to configure your other browser to be a proxy in order to be able to use it with Burp Suite. So, there is a nice um, automated way now with this browser, but you can still do the manual method. Uh, they both essentially work the same. So why would you use one method versus the other? Uh, well, it really comes down to, to preference. That's really all it is. Uh, some people have, you know, 
their preferences and they really prefer to use Firefox or their specific you know version of Chrome. Um, and if you have a pr preferred web browser, you can you can definitely use it with Burp Suite, and it works out pretty well, and it's familiar, and has all those features and things that you might expect. But if you just kind of uh, want a quick, quick and dirty way to get started with Burp Suite, um, you can just use uh, the built-in browser. So if you click on it, it should load. It's based off of a Chromium, uh, and again, it's pretty straightforward. Um, I will mention uh, in some environments, including my lab environment, uh, by default, this did not work. Uh, this environment does not have a, a GPU installed on it. It's uh, just a virtual machine. So you, you, what you might potentially have to do is go into Burp, go into Settings, and then go into uh, Burp's browser and try toggling this checkbox. Uh, if you're getting an error message launching the open browser, if you click Open Browser and you get an error message, uh, go in here and toggle this either on or off uh, and try it again. So with the web browser open, I am going to go to an application I have set up and running in my lab environment here. It's known as the OWASP Juice Shop. Uh, and for those of you taking my class, uh, this is going to be pre-configured in your lab environment. Um, if you want to do this at home or outside of the classroom, you can download the OWASP Juice Shop from uh, OWASP. It's a Node.js application and you can set it up on a VM uh, either within, within Kali Linux or on a a uh, different uh, VM as well if, if you want to set up a dedicated VM. So to get to this, I'm in my lab environment. It's going to be uh, HTTP. Come on, let me type. www.discountjuiceshop.com. Um, the HTTP and the www, those things are really important because this service is not running HTTPS. Um, and you need this www in front of it. It's a fake domain. Um, in order to get the host record to resolve. And ta-da, it's up and running. And as you can see, as I do that, uh, the, the, the site map is starting to populate as I go through uh, the proxy. As I, uh, if I wanna turn this on, interception, I'll talk about that is in a little bit. Um, that'll start now, start to work. I can go through and start doing different actions uh, and start capturing requests. So again, this is kind of way one. You can use uh, Burp Suite is using the built-in Chromium browser. That being said, this was not always the way that you would do this, and there's still the traditional way that you can actually use Burp, is, um, which is by setting up a proxy in your own web browser, whether you prefer to use Firefox, uh, the official Chrome, Opera, you name it, whatever your browser of choice is. And a lot of people still prefer to do that. There isn't really one way that's better than the other. Uh, it's just, uh, do you prefer Burp's uh, built-in Chrome browser, or do you prefer whatever browser that you typically use on the day-to-day? -day? Maybe you have some plugins, other things that are set up, some quality of life features, um, and you can use your own browser. That being said, if you're going to use your own browser, uh, it is nice uh, to be able to turn that proxy feature on and off. Manually configuring the proxy in Firefox can kind of be a pain, just as an example. So there's a tool known as Foxy Proxy. It's a plugin you can install that essentially adds a button. You push the button and it turns the proxy on and off automatically, which is pretty awesome. Um, so just to show you how that works, if I open up Firefox, you can manually configure a proxy under settings. Uh, it's somewhere under network. Let me try to searching for proxy under settings, and you can manually turn this on and off. Um, go into the settings every single time, type in the proxy information, um, turn it on, and then when you're done, go in and switch it back to uh, the defaults. So you can turn this on and off, uh, but there's a tool that I like a lot called Foxy Proxy, so I'm gonna show you how to find that. If you search for Foxy Proxy, it's gonna be right on addons.mozilla.org. I'm going to add this to Firefox. And now we're going to configure it. I've already done this on my machine, so this already might be kind of pre-configured, but we'll have to see. I'm going to go into Options. And I want to go into Add. 
and I'm going to create a proxy. So I'm going to call this burp. So we're using burp suite, and I'm going to have the the proxy IP address be 127.0.0.1. Uh, this is essentially going to connect to the proxy running on the same VM. And for the port, I'll do 8080. 80. Go ahead, go ahead and click save. And again, what's really cool about this is let's say you're you know just browsing the internet and you can turn this on uh, by clicking on the little fox icon and say I use the BERT proxy or turn off the proxy. So isn't that great? And you can have multiple proxies set up if you're doing proxies for other things as well. So I typed in port 8080 when I was configuring it. Uh, one thing just to keep a, a, an eye out for is under, where is it? Under proxy and under options, uh, you want to set your port to whatever you have listed under the proxy listeners. So by default, it's port 8080. Um, you might have more in here as well. Um, why might you why might you want to have more than one? Well, maybe you have different proxy listeners opening up for different testing purposes. Um, we can get into that later, but by default, just the one on port 8080 is fine. So again, just to kind of show you how this is going to work, um, right now, intercept is off. That means that the proxy is going to let just traffic pass through. And when the proxy is off, nothing's, it, nothing is going to be captured by Burp Suite. So if I, you know, go to my discount juice shop website uh, and do some browsing around. You'll notice that nothing else new pops up within Burp Suite, both within the sitemap uh, or uh, within the intercept function. But as soon as I go in here and I turn the proxy on, it is going to start uh, capturing stuff. So it's going to start capturing um, requests. If I turn on the intercept, and as you see, it already, already caught one. Um, and it's going to start working. One other thing I want to mention about this is it may be wise to install some SSL certificates if you're testing any web applications over uh, over an HTTPS uh, uh, over an HTTPS web service. And to do that, you just go into here and you just go to burp. Try that again. HTTP colon slash slash burp. And this is going to load this uh, page if all is good and all, all is good and set up correctly. And I want to click on CA certificate, and you're going to download this certificate. I already did this once before, so my certificate is still here. And what you're going to do is then you're going to go into Firefox under settings. Uh, it's under security, but I'm just going to search for certificates, and I'm going to go under view certificates. And I'd go under import, and I'm going to import my uh, certificate that I downloaded from Burp Suite. So I did this yesterday. Um, you can do it again. I'm going to select my original one because it's the same certificate, and it's going to install it. So you'll click OK, you'll click OK, and then it'll be set up for HTTPS, which is also pretty nice. So I think that'll be it now. I don't, I don't want to make this video go on for too long, but that just gives you some context about how you can get up and running with Burp Suite. Uh, we'll talk about how to actually use it uh, in the next videos.